Kirk Wagger. I'm the U.S. Ambassador to Singapore. First, let me say it's beyond humbling. You know, I, I think that, um, I say it all the time that I feel a little bit like Forrest Gump and I wonder if someone's going to tap me on the shoulder and say, Wagger, this is a terrible mistake. Um, but now, almost two and a half years in, and I start preparing for it for about nine months, so really about three years uh, in this world. You know, I think it's safe to say that whether you're a political appointee like myself or a career appointee, no one is ever entitled to be a U.S. ambassador. You can rise to the highest levels of our agencies and our departments as career diplomats, and there are some phenomenal people I get to work with. But to be the personal representative of the President of the United States uh, is something that you have to approach with, uh, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. um, so. When I came to this country, and as I became more and more involved in Miami, uh, my third year of law school, Hurricane Andrew happened, and, and that's where I saw the city you know, come together in a pretty drastic time, and that's when Miami became my home. Um, as I started my career, uh, I felt it was important to be involved in some way, and I was always intrigued by you know, those who would put their name on a ballot. You know, I, I think that's um, a pretty incredible thing. I don't think people give it enough respect um, to, you know, leave your family for long periods of time, go through some really grueling and unfun things. Um, and so I decided I would get involved. Now, I essentially got involved through uh, the Florida Justice Association, which back then was called the Academy of Florida Trial Lawyers, uh, and helped can candidates on a bipartisan basis. In fact, I, uh, one of the things I, I like to point to is that I uh, phone banked for Marco Rubio in his first election to the State House uh, in Bill Kerdike's office for uh, a good chunk of uh, three weeks. Uh, oh, the real estate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Over in Coral Gables. Um, but as I became more involved, I saw that my, um, my values uh, were certainly more aligned with the Democratic Party. And so um, I volunteered on all kinds of uh, campaigns, uh, doing everything from picking up people at the airport to knocking on doors. And eventually um, decided to even get deeper in. And so uh, I did young professional fundraising for Al Gore. Uh, I uh, volunteered for Janet Reno's campaign. Um, after that, uh, and I, you know, I helped out congressional campaigns um, and Senate campaigns, mostly through the National Trial Lawyers Organization, which is now called AAJ. It used to be um, ATLA. And um, then John Kerry's campaign started, and I had met him uh, through the National Trial Lawyers. I was the chair of the Young Lawyers section of the, then the Academy of Florida Trial Lawyers. And I then went on to be the chair of the New Lawyers Division nationally. Mm -hmm. So we had about 13,000 me members in that subgroup. And so you had these folks who were just starting their career who wanted to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's where my friendships, my networks, and like-minded uh, teammates, if you will, mm -hmm. um, came so from. So the second part of our pillar is the economic pillar. There are 3,600 American businesses based in Singapore. And uh, most, if not all, have regional responsibilities. Some have global. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a, even a move uh, from Hong Kong to, uh, to Singapore over the last few years. For example, General Motors, <coughs> I think, had been in Hong Kong for 70 years. Mm -hmm. And they decided to spin off their China business uh, to Shanghai and move the rest of their global business to Singapore. Uh, it's got the number one airport in the world. Um, it's just easy to attract talent there. There's not the smog problem there are in some of the other parts of Asia. So schools are get good for, their, for your kids. It's an English-speaking uh, country. So there's a lot of reasons why it's attractive. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you know, I fundamentally believe that American business is a force multiplier for a foreign policy. There are mm -hmm. things that we do innately differently than other countries' companies do. Right? We hire locally, not because we're you know, trying to uh, you know, buy the world of Coke. We do it because it makes our com company stronger. Right? We believe in diversity is, is an advantage. Um, we do technology tra uh, transfers and training. We, we, we lift up 
uh, folks when they work for our companies. And we just have a commitment to corporate social responsibility. You know, we become part of the community. Um, and that's noticed there. The United States invests more in ASEAN, the 10 countries of ASEAN, the, um, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, uh, than the next three countries combined. The problem is that we sometimes don't align our businesses with our with our country. So um, you'll see Coca-Cola putting four hundred million dollars into bottling factories in Myanmar. Well, we're not getting the credit for that, you know, as opposed to other countries who will show up with an Ed McMahon-style check and say, "Here's what we're doing." <clears throat> we do it through our companies. Mm -hmm. you know, the largest investment in the history of Singapore is Exxon. They've done a combined eleven billion dollars. Their largest refinery in the world is in Singapore. Um, Citigroup employees uh, is the third largest private employer in Singapore. Eighty-three percent of their employees are Singaporean. You know, those are good stories about who we are, as opposed to maybe some other countries who bring in their own employees uh, and don't integrate into the community. Okay. So I, I'm a big believer in that. Singapore is our, our highest performing free trade agreement globally out of the 21 we have. It, uh, it is now 11 years old. Last year we celebrated our 10-year anniversary of it. Um, trade has increased 49%. Um, one of the things that isn't captured well, I think, is our trade and services, you know, financial, accounting, insurance, because uh, I think it would be even higher. Um, and Singapore acts as a platform for our investment throughout ASEAN. Hospitality uh, yeah. investments have been here. The new Coma Hotel is owned by uh, a Singaporean uh, there's another uh, hotel here, a woman uh, that I just met before I left said that they just opened a, no, they're building a, a condo uh, project. Uh, uh, but then you have anything that's related to port work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't realize it's a Singaporean company, right? Um, and they are a world leader in logistics, just mm -hmm. phenomenal. They manage, I think, 14 ports around the world. Okay. Might be more, might be less. Um, but their companies are set up that way. And, uh, they do rigs, they do all kinds of things like that. So mm -hmm. as more trade flows through here from the east because of the widening of Panama Canal, uh, I see a lot more opportunities. Mm -hmm. And Singapore is very similar to Miami in a sense that it is the platform for the 10 countries of ASEAN and, and beyond, right? Um, you know, Singapore as a country is the single largest foreign direct investor into both China and India. And a lot of our companies um, who find those markets, I think, rightly uh, complicated, uh, will sometimes enter into some kind of a strategic alliance or uh, uh, at least a specific partnership to do business uh, with a Singaporean company uh, into those markets. I think we could also bring that back of people who are looking to do um, business in Central and South America using this as a platform. Mm. Our free trade agreement is pretty strong. Um, there are certain uh, specific issues um, that inhibit some investments. Uh, their main investment vehicles are two sovereign wealth funds, um, but they have pretty commercial standards, and yet they're kind of put in the same basket under our laws as some of the state-owned enterprises, say, in China or Russia. Um, so you know, we work through those, but um, for the most part, um, Singapore is probably our strongest partner in uh, the benefits of free trade. Mm -hmm. now, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which we just signed off on, and God willing, we'll, we'll uh, have Congress um, pass that this year, or sorry, in 2016, as we're almost at the end of 2015, um, started with four countries called the, the four Ps, uh, and it was sm small countries. And Singapore was one of the pillars of that. Um, once the U.S. got involved, that changed the game, and then, of course, when, uh, when Japan got involved, we now have 40% of the world's GDP under one, yeah. under one uh, umbrella, which lifts um, the standards on environmental, labor, intellectual property, and many things um, that really sets um, a standard to level the playing field for our companies in some of these markets over there.